I'm sorry, just before we start, I um, wanted to uh, uh, read from Romans 8. And uh, Romans 8 and 6, 6 and 7, but also um, Romans 13, um, 8 and 13, right? 8, 6, 7, and 13. Uh, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. Verse 13. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many are led, uh, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Right. So um, I just wanted to focus, and of course, we've been looking at you know how to be carnally minded brings about death. Um, and, you know how it is not subject; it's not obedient to the law of God. You know, it's not submission submitted to the law of God and all that. Um, but I just want us to focus on the fact that uh, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Right? To be spiritually minded is life and peace. So uh, while we we've been looking at okay, this is this is what it uh, you know it, it 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 is exactly the opposite of a carnal mind, a spiritual mind. A spiritual mind ushers in life and peace. You know, so um, so I just want us to focus on that. You know, how so because to be spiritually minded is to have life and is have the peace of God uh, all the time. You know, how can I be spiritually minded? Right, and also to to really renew our uh, our. Uh, should I should say that um, how we can be <clears throat> renewed in our uh, in our uh, no, should I say effort um, to be spiritually minded, you know, renewed in our fervor to be spiritually minded, to constantly be spiritually minded and not to be carnally minded. We can't to, be, to slip into carnality is easy, right? Um, but to to live in that place of uh, uh, to be spiritually minded, to live in uh, with a renewed mind, and to um, to focus our mind on things that matter to God is 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 a is a walk, and it's a, sometimes it's a fight. It's a fight of faith. Right? Um, verse thirteen: If by the Spirit, if you live according to the Spirit, uh, and then you put to death the deeds of the body. So I just want to place before us that by the Spirit we can. And we will put to death the deeds of the body, right? To be spiritually minded is life and life and peace. Just focus on that. And if by the spirit you put to death, we will be able to put to death. We can, and we will put to death the deeds of the body. It says, "You will live," and that's the invitation of God you know, to live, to be spiritually minded, to have life and peace. That's the invitation of God to uh, of our Lord to. Um, to be spiritually minded and by the spirit, putting to death the deeds of the body, um, and uh, and to live. Right. So let's pray. Um, pray this possibility. You know, uh, many times we dwell on the impossibilities or dwell on the negatives. Right? Um, this want us to dwell on this that it is a it is a possibility that these works to, uh, these verses talk about, and it's victory that these verses talk about for us to. Uh, as believers to walk in and experience the fullness of life that is in Christ. Amen? Yeah, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, to be spiritually reminded is life and peace. Lord, we thank you for the possibility and for the reality, Lord, of uh, putting to death the deeds of the body and uh, to live, God, to have the life of Christ in us, thriving and flourishing, God. And to this you appointed us, to this you have invited and called us, God. Father, we thank you. Lord, we come at each one of us. Lord, we pray that we will walk in the reality of it, that we will walk in the experience of it, God. And not just, uh, Lord, talk about it, but walk in the experience of it, O oh, Father God. Yes, Master, we, I just pray for a release, O oh God, of your favor. I just pray for a release, O oh God, of Holy Spirit empowering, even right now, Lord, that we would walk in the reality of this, even today and in the days ahead, God. We thank you. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And then, <clears throat> okay. 
So we've been looking at, uh, I think we're just almost nearing the end of, uh, you know, some of these, uh, um, some of these topics. So as, uh, last class, we looked at how, uh, you know, putting to uh, out crucify the flesh and, um, and how to be rooted in him. Know, the, that is to be established in him. Um, all our whatever things that actually um, that give us stability must be Christ and not any other structure. Right? We looked at Colossians two six and seven it talks about how um, rooted and built up in him, rooted in him and built up in him, and and established in the faith. Right, and and that is. Um, that is that is a an instruction that we will be rooted, built up, established in the faith, right? And uh, our, that our roots will go deep; it will not be superficial, which means our grip on our identity, our grip on uh, our relationship with Christ, uh, our grip on the scriptures, our grip on everything. You know, just um, just like how the roots of a plant just go deep and then and cause stability to bring him to the plant, it cause nutrition to reach the plant, that we would be rooted in him, right? Okay, uh, at the same time, there's something that needs to be severed, that which means cut away and uh, not be part of our lives. Okay, so that is, um, that's the last part of that uh, topic, severing ungodly influences, that uh, these things be cut away from our lives, okay, uh, almost surgically, and not being part of us, okay. Um, like one Corinthians fifteen and verse thirty-three says, "Evil company corrupts good habits." So, what is the what is the end result? That there is an influence of evil company. That even when we have good habits as part of our lives, uh, that this evil company influences uh, and brings in corruption, brings in decay. Right. So, so the, uh, of course, the natural thing to do. The logical thing to do is to is to cut away that influence, um, so that it does not influence, so that it does not take over, so that it does not corrupt. Right? So this severing also needs to happen. As much as we are being rooted in Christ, established and built up in Christ, there needs to be a severing away or cutting away or distancing ourselves from things that corrupt. Okay, um, and. Definitely, you know, uh, when we when we look at influences, um, we are most influenced by other human beings. Right? We are most influenced by uh, like people and uh, their what they bring in to our lives, and so on. And the most influenced in the sense, you know, people have access into our lives. So we need to be discerning and see, you know, if is what they are bringing in is what they are offering. Um, and uh, what I'm really, you know, fellowshipping with, surrounding myself with, day in and day out, is that bringing in corruption? Is that bringing in decay, or is that really, you know, leading me to life? Okay, uh, I'm sure that as you know, as teenagers growing up, uh, you know, there was a lot of peer pressure, like pressure to conform, pressure to uh, be part of a group, pressure to be appreciated. Right uh, and so on and so we didn't we didn't really bother like even other, even if others told us hey, that, that person is the wrong influence you know that person is is not really uh, okay but we didn't really bother we we wanted you know we, we just felt deep inside that hey I know my limits but at the same time <clears throat> you know I want to be part of this group part of this gang and uh, and we didn't realize that uh, you know that had an influence on us that had an influence on our speech i, I very clearly you know vividly remember uh, i think this was in class 11 or class 12 and uh, you know just out of 10 standard and uh, you know experiencing a little bit of freedom and and all that and um, and uh, i remember the company of people that uh, who, were, who were with me and then i, I noticed my language begin beginning to change Right, uh, my language beginning to change. Using words um, that were vulgar, using words that were unwholesome, and uh, and so on. And then uh, you know, one day, it just be, it was just part of uh, part and parcel of my um, speech and uh, communication conversations. And one day, I realized that. And then I was having a chat with a friend, and I said, you know, you know our language is, uh, you know, is really become worse, right? And then uh, and then she said, yeah, yeah. 
guys are really you know uh, vulgar in your in your words and so on so um the thing is it do- doesn't it doesn't happen overnight it doesn't happen you know um, uh, immediately but then it happens over a period of time right so um, well i'm not saying that uh, you know we should just separate ourselves but we need to be careful uh, and we need to you know where we need to uh, really cut away uh, we need to cut away okay right okay so um, and uh, of course uh, staying consecrated which is a continuous thing okay, let me just share the notes Okay, so today, um, you know, we look at uh, living daily. It's chapter nine. So living daily with a renewed mind. Okay. Living daily with a renewed mind. So we we looked at uh, the whole aspect of renewal of the mind. Okay. Um, so we will we will you know we will see some things that are overlaps. So um, you know, don't get tired with that. Don't get we don't be tired out by that. We will there are some overlaps, and hopefully it reiterates some things that we you know already know. Okay, so we looked at uh, renewing the renewed mind. Um, you know, one way to look at uh, a renewed mind or a mind being renewed in some area of our lives is to see the behavior, right? To see the transformation. So if there is transformation in a particular area of our lives, that means that area of our life uh, is renewed. That, you know, what um, uh, area of our life, I'm sorry, uh, that our mind is renewed in that particular area. You know, maybe if it, if it is something to do with, uh, let's say, for example, you know, it's something to do with forgiveness, right? If we see that forgiveness active and uh, alive and part of our lives in our you know in our behavior then we can we can say for sh- we can say surely that there has been renewal of our mind there has been uh, alignment and renovation of our mind in that aspect right so uh, let's look at romans 12 you know this is a verse that we looked at uh, earlier as well romans 12 verse 1 and 2 verses 1 and 2 I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. He said there is this presentation of our bodies as a living sacrifice that we need to do willingly. Okay, um, Verse 2, and do not be conformed to this world. Okay, So don't, be, um, don't fit in to the world's ways, values, um, habits but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, so there is transformation by the renewing of our mind. So if our mind is renewed, then we can be assured that there is transformation. Okay, if our mind is partially renewed, even if something like that is possible, then our transformation is also partial, which means it's inconsistent, right? Um, and part of that renewing of our mind is that uh, that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we we begin to understand uh, what God's desire is, what God's will and wish is for our lives and on different matters. Right? And it just goes without saying, right? So when our mind is renewed to the word of God, our mind is renewed to the will of God, right? Because uh, the word of God is the will of God. And if you look at, um, uh, you know, if you look at the logos, right, that's the will. It's the desire of God. All these principles and precepts that are there in the word, um, that's the desire of God. These are the thoughts and opinions of God, right? So, when our mind is renewed to the word of God, then our mind is being renewed to the will and wishes and desire. Of God, okay, um, and we're just generally talking about the logos. Then, then of course, when you come to the quickened word, right, the Holy Spirit, quickened word of God, when our mind is renewed to that, you know, specific instructions, um, then that results in obedience. That results in knowing what God's heart is in that specific um, matter, specific scenario, right? Maybe we. Each of us face certain things that are unique, uh, challenges that are different. Um, you know, our 
um, the way God leads us or what he's leading us into. The call of God is different. Um, so how do we know that is when we, when our mind is aligned, our thoughts are aligned, uh, our whole, uh, you know, um, our thinking pattern is aligned to the quickened word of God, whatever he has spoken, whatever he's continuing to speak to us, you know, the directions that he's given us, when he's giving us, when we are, when our mind is renewed with that, when our mind is renewed with that instruction, then, you know, it talks about the proving or, um, you know, the testing and finding to be true, the will of God, the heart of God uh, for in that, in that uh, particular thing, so area, right? So uh, this is what it renewed, uh, results in. So the, the renewal of our mind is something that is continuous. Okay? This is what it results in. So it's exciting. Right, the renewal of our mind results in transformation, and transformation is something that we, you know, that all of us desire. That Lord, I want to be more like you. You know, we pray that God, I want to be more like you, God. Uh, I want more of you, God. You know, may may I be transformed to be like you in my thoughts and words and action, God. You know, in relating to people and and everything, you know. But this is, you know, one of the keys of that, keys to that, right? In in so ordering our lives and behavior in line with with god okay let's look at Ephesians 4. if we go to Ephesians 4 and uh, um, 23 okay Ephesians 4 and verse 23 um you know uh, let's read from uh, verse 20 but you have not so learned christ if indeed you heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in jesus that you put off concerning your former conduct. Okay, that you put off concerning your former conduct. So your former behavior, your former way of living that you put off. What do you put off? The old man or the old, you know, all old, old self, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to god in true righteousness and holiness so he's talking about putting on and putting off taking on and taking off right so which means that you draw near to certain things and draw away from certain things right and uh, in the realm of our thoughts and minds so be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You put on, so this putting on of the new man, of the new creation, and uh, and, and everything that the new creation is um, is supposed to be. Right? You put on, which is created according to the God in true righteousness and holiness. So verse 24 talks about, uh, we're reading Ephesians 4, verse 24, talks about the putting on. And verse 22 says that you put off so there is a putting on and putting off. You put off, what do you put off concerning your former conduct? Okay, so your earlier way of living, the old man, um, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Now, now the thing is, when we read Romans 6, we see that we've already, you know, that our old man was, was crucified with Christ, that the body of sins may be, the body of sin might be done away with. So that has already been done. Okay. Now, we put on and put off, uh, we put off what the old man represents or the old man's way of living that we put it off consciously. Right? Even though our spirit man is is brand new, is, uh, is a new creation in Christ, that our soul, our soul realm, in our soul realm, we need to put off the ways of the body of sin. We need to put off the ways of the old man. Okay, now that's us our responsibility daily right? and we put on the new man the new creation the spirit man uh, and the spirit way of living right the new way of living new creation life we put on we take on or in other words we just invite we open up our lives to that we close our lives to the other thing okay so what are some things that we can take on 
Okay, Isaiah 58, verses 8 to 11. We take on the ways of God. We take on the thoughts of God. Okay, So this is something that happens daily. Right? But God says, uh, verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. So, so, our, so the thing is this, that we take on and we make our thoughts his thoughts. Or in other words, we make his thoughts as our thoughts. And these are thoughts which are contrary. Um, like we, we, you know, we studied the context in this, right? It's not like every thought that I have. You know, I have a thought of worship. I have a thought of praise. I have a thought of, um, you know, we following God and doing things. And, and these are, you know, from birth uh, out of a great desire to please God and so on. Now, we can't say these are not, you know, uh, my thoughts. God, these are my thoughts, and so um, you know, it's very different from your thoughts, right? Uh, we can't, we can't say that. So the context is that the wicked will forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Yeah. So that is why. So we understand that. So we take on the thoughts and ways of God. Right? And uh, the Lord says, my thoughts are higher thoughts. My ways are higher ways. And so we take on the higher thoughts. We take on the higher ways. Which means that we put off, we automatically you know, um, put off any thoughts of carnality, any fleshly thoughts, any lower realm thoughts. Okay, and um, just wanted to uh, uh, you know remind us that uh, like even when it wants when you know uh, uh, when it comes to doing uh, the will of God or uh, you know understanding the thoughts of God, um, well, there could be things that are good. Right? There could be things that are good. But not necessarily, you know, things that God wants us to do. Okay, uh, things that are good, you know, which means not morally, ethically, they're fine, right? But are these, you know, specifically, you know, just I'm just digressing a little, just specifically for us, for you as an individual, for me as an individual, is that something that God wants me to go into? Right. So principally, it's fine. You know, biblically, if you look at it, yeah, it's good. But the Lord wants to, you know, lead us in ways, in the perfect ways that what He wants for us, the good works that He's prepared for us. Right. And uh, and we we see that you know, um, Romans eight and verse twenty six. We do not know what we should pray for as we ought. We do not know what we should pray for as we ought, because, and one such scenario or you know time that happens is when when, when we have options before us, and uh, all are good, they are noble, good things. Right. So what do I pray? What action do I take? Right. We do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Holy Spirit Himself makes intercession for us. With groanings which cannot be uttered. Okay, so it talks about um, words the Holy Spirit uh, gives us in intercession. With groanings uh, with words that are not articulate. You know, talking about the uh, praying in the Spirit, where we pray and and talking the verses following that talks about you know um, he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is. So praying the perfect will for us. Right. So we take on the thoughts of God in, in that manner where it becomes clearer, where it becomes, oh, I do not know what I should pray for, but then I'm going to pray in the Spirit because the Spirit of God knows the perfect will and the, and the ways of God. So I'm going to pray. And in that praying, things become clearer. There is a knowing on the inside in my spirit. There's a revelation uh, in my spirit about the ways of God, about the ways of God for me. Right, and even in the midst of these options that are good, that seem to be good, what is that God wants me to do? Right, so I take on the thoughts and ways of God. The second thing is also taking on the attitude of Christ. Okay, so our attitude, you know, um, is is a way of um, a, a, a set way of thinking about certain things. Attitude of Christ. The attitude of Christ, we see in Philippians 2 that he humbled himself. Right? So he humbled himself, that is an attitude. 
the attitude of humility. He humbled himself to serve. So that's an attitude of humility. So we take on that. It is also, you know, it just doesn't stop with that, but also it means a, a victorious, a victorious attitude and a mindset. Right? When it comes to the work, uh, you know, destroying the works of the enemy, he went about doing the good. Uh, we, we read in Acts chapter 10 that he went about doing good, destroying the works of the enemy. So we, we take on that attitude, that mindset of a victorious one in the spirit. Right? So take on the attitude. So this all this is uh, with the renewed mind. It's where we take on the ways and thoughts of God, where we take on the attitude of Christ. And also we take on the knowledge of God. Okay, The knowledge of God. Uh, the understanding of who God is, the very nature and the heart of God. Uh, Colossians 3 you know, talks about that. Um, Colossians 3 and verse 10, we'll just read it. Um, okay, Colossians 3 10. Um, do not lie to uh, sorry nine onwards. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, who is renewed in knowledge, according to the image of him who created him. Who is renewed in knowledge, according to him, in in accordance uh, with Christ, according to the image of him who created him. Right. But first, him refers to Christ himself and uh, who created him, you know, referring to uh, ourselves. And so we have put on the new man. Okay. And so uh, we take on the knowledge of God, the revelation of God. And this also, you know, something that we grow in. Okay. okay so living daily with a renewed mind. So it's a continuous process, right? And uh, it, it involves. Uh, receiving revelation, like Colossians 3 and uh, verse 10, that you put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. So we uh, well, let us happen to us um, uh, when, when, we, when, when we received Christ. But it's also uh, something that is progressive, that we grow in the knowledge, right? that we grow in the understanding. And this is something that we need to uh, press into daily. Right? We grow in the knowledge, we grow in the understanding uh, of God. Uh, and uh, when we say knowledge, we're talking about um, the revealed things, you know, when, what God reveals about himself um, and the understanding that we receive uh, you know, of, uh, of, the heart, of the heart of God. Okay, um, So we read in Second uh, Peter and chapter 3 and verse 18, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to Him be glory both now and forever. Okay, grow in the knowledge, grace, and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we know that is you know something that is revealed to us, um, not just um, you know facts and figures, but something even more right? in relationship, from a place of relationship, from a place of um, Holy Spirit walking with us and revealing things to our heart. So grow in that. So we receive revelation. We grow in our understanding uh, uh, in the light of that revelation in the knowledge of God. Okay. So, so that is also renewing our mind. We are living daily, continuously um, renewing our mind. Okay. So as we grow. Okay. The second thing is the conquest of the mind, what we've studied, where we we recognize the fact that the mind is a battlefield. We recognize the fact that okay, I need to take every captive thought, um, uh, captive every thought. I can't just be passive, right? Can't just be passive and uh, let uh, the enemy infiltrate my mind with thoughts, thoughts that are unedifying, thoughts that result in uh, unedifying action or, or unrighteous action thoughts that really war against my soul okay so uh, i need to <clears throat> be discerning and take every thought captive okay the third thing <clears throat> is of course renewing our mind we're talking about you know the conquest of the mind and so <clears throat> it's about 
the battle, uh, understanding that it's a battlefield, understanding that um, you know there's a responsibility that I have to fight this battle and take every thought captive, and also the responsibility that I have as a believer to renew my mind and to develop a mindset that is word centric and, and therefore positive. Right. The third thing uh, is to learn to balance. Okay, balance what? You know, we we don't look at each of these uh, to balance uh, certain things. One is a reason. Okay, to balance reason, just um, you know. The Lord has given us a mind, so He has given us the faculty of thinking, uh, reasoning, coming to certain conclusions. So balance, you know, so that aspect. Then to live with a renewed mind. To also be led by the Spirit, and sometimes we need to acknowledge that it goes against reason, human reason. Right? The Lord asks us to do certain things. We're led by the spirit, and uh, to go against human reason. You know, classic example. Well, the Lord gives an instruction to Peter both those times, you know, to to cast the net. Even after he has fished, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Jeffina's question is: How can we grow in grace? Okay, uh, we can grow in the knowledge of God, but how can we grow in grace? Yeah, so so grace also uh, uh, refers to a few things, right? Like grow grace. When you say grace, it's unmerited favor. You know, God extending His favor to us, which we do not deserve. Right. So that is grace. Grace also refers to uh, what He is giving us freely. You know, uh, the gifts uh, of the Spirit. It's uh, these are gifts of grace. Grace also uh, refers to divine. Uh, enablement, right? Which means uh, growing in the empowerment of God. So we see all these um, form grace, right? So when we say grow in grace, it's to grow in the understanding of grace, you know, to be rooted in that and not works, you know? to be uh, rooted in the fact that, okay, um, or, or to like, uh, you know, to be rooted in love, right? to be rooted in grace, to be strong in that grace um that whatever we've received you know it's it's from him and uh, so grow to be rooted in that revelation and also to be rooted in or to grow in the gifts of grace right um where these are given freely and we don't earn it we don't perform uh, but, but to grow in that and also grace means the divine enablement so to grow in all these facets of grace, yeah, and uh, so that's the thing. So, how do we grow? Of course, growth comes with uh, with understanding. Growth, growth comes with uh, receiving, uh, and also um, putting to practice, walking in it. Um, so that's why you know Peter exhorts and says, "We grow in this, you know, grow in the knowledge and in the grace." Yeah. I hope that helps, Stephanie. Yes, it's first. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so uh, we learn to, you know, so this aspect of, uh, okay, we have this reason, we have this renewed mind, leading in the spirit, leading uh, to be led by the spirit. We know sometimes it goes against you know, human reasoning. Um, um, and then, you know, like, uh, like you're saying, the classic example is like Peter, he's fished all night, but the Lord says, okay, the, according to human reasoning, it's like, uh, you know, nothing has happened and nothing can happen today, right? But what was Jesus leading him to do? What was Jesus instructing him to do, to do the same thing, right, that morning? Uh, and then, so that was that he went uh, against his own reasoning and he did that, okay? So uh, we can say, okay, leading of the Holy Spirit, right, for us as New Testament believers. Um, uh, and sometimes it might be unreasonable, right? Things he's uh, asking us to do. And the same thing again with Peter. Right? Go drop a fish. I'm sorry, drop a hook into the sea. Um, pull up the first fish that you catch, and then you open its mouth. That will have a coin. 
okay um totally supernatural so some of the two supernatural ways go against the natural thought patterns and reasonings okay um so holding that also in the same holding that intention right? reasoning and my renewing my renewed mind uh, walking with a renewed mind to the, with the truth of god's word being led by the spirit of god and being led by the spirit of god of course our renewed mind will just you know latch on to that because it is uh, the word and the spirit that they agree so the word uh, with which we renew our mind agrees with the the leading of the holy spirit and that's why it's so important to renew our mind with the word of god right so there's an agreement there is a strength that comes and our will says okay you need to do it okay then the other thing is uh, to avoid presumption okay. so presumption is when we presume something to be true which is not or when we presume something to be right when it is not okay or when we presume that we have heard from god when we have not okay presumption okay so presumption is not based uh, on the word of god it could be very subtle uh, so avoiding that so uh, learning to live you know intention or in a in a to hold things in balance okay so ever having a continuous process we we've seen this right so to a continuous process of living uh, in uh, uh, with a renewed mind uh, re receiving revelation receiving wisdom and uh, living uh, in uh, that constant uh, growth and uh, and a lifestyle of having a renewed mind. The second one, conquest of the mind. We won't go into it. We've just you know, gone through and uh, seen all that. Okay. So let's look at the third one, which is uh, you know the living in balance with um, uh, avoiding the pitfall of presumption. Now this is a this is an area which uh, we which you really need to be mindful of. Okay. So if you look at um, uh, the mind of a believer. Right. Okay. And especially, you know, when we look at the renewed mind, when we say, okay. um, we know that God has created us, spirit, soul, and body. God has given us the faculty uh, of thinking, right, to analyze, to reason, to think, right, um, and other intellectual capacities. You know, with which we pursue academics and you know our research and so on the ability to think question right and uh, god is not against that right we he has given he has designed so he's not against that uh, proverbs 13 16 every prudent man acts with knowledge okay but a fool op lays open his folly proverbs 19 2 it is not good for a soul to be without knowledge okay. and he sins who hastens with his feet uh, again Proverbs 24 6 by wise counsel you will wage your own war and so on okay so there is this aspect of knowledge living uh, and or using our mental faculties um, which is God given and God is not opposed to that. Okay. Um, so God wants us to be mature in our understanding, to to live with that, uh, with knowledge and putting that knowledge to work in our lives. So he's not opposed to that. Right? Uh, we need to understand that. Okay. So mind, you know, using our mind, when we say, okay, use reason, logic, it's not bad. It's not a bad word. Then, when we look at, uh, you know, in, in the same way, our minds need to be renewed, renewed to the word of God. We know that. Okay. Renewed to the thoughts, the words of God. So again, it's in the realm of our mind. So our reasoning is with a renewed mind. Okay. Our analysis and reasoning is with a renewed mind, renewed with the word of God. So it's a very powerful um, let's say, uh, uh, entity. You know, it's very powerful to have a renewed mind, to have intellectual capacities, you know, um, like 
magnified many times, increased many times with a renewed mind. Okay, so it's a powerful, it's a it's a powerful tool for a human being to possess. Okay, the second thing is that to live with that balance of that of having a uh, you know with that reasoning with the renewed mind and the leading of the Holy Spirit. Okay, now the challenge is this. That sometimes, when the Spirit of God leads us, when He wants us to do certain things, that it goes beyond reasons. Now, we looked at Peter's example, uh, and a few more examples of Peter is, you know, walking on water, um, and so on, right? But here, uh, we see many other examples, right? All the supernatural works of God and. Uh, you know, filling water into the into the pots, water pots, and then changing that into wine and so on. And but before that, you know, just filling it. So, what would have gone on in the minds of those people, right? So the thing is that the Holy Spirit leads us. Spirit of God leads us, instructs us to go beyond uh, our general reasoning. Okay, but when we reason. Um, with that, uh, with with a renewed mind, okay, we when we reason with a renewed mind, then we are able to go with the leading of the Holy Spirit, okay, because uh, like we said, the Word and the 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 Spirit agree, okay. So so that's the way to go forward. That is the way to uh, you know move forward. So when uh, the one one more thing about uh, living with a renewed mind is also that uh, uh, the fact that you know when there could be times when the Holy Spirit uh, well there's no specific instruction from the Spirit of God there's a specific leading uh, from the Spirit of God okay and uh, things could be like um, uh, well certain choices that. We might have about our clothing, about our food, and everything, right? So, well, we just use our mind, okay, and um, we just go with it. And sometimes we live with the principles of God's word. We understand, okay, this is what the principle is, rather than you know always have being subjectively led by the Holy Spirit. We, okay, this is the broad principles, so, or you know, uh, my mind is renewed to these principles of God's word, and so I, I live with it. Okay. Now, when it comes to, uh, I just want to uh, further go down to this presumption. Now that's a danger area because um, we presume, okay, we come to a conclusion that we have heard from God about certain things, okay, and um, and then we we act on it, okay, when we haven't actually. Now um, the thing is, we are so sure. Maybe it's because uh, we desired that thing. Okay, we desired that course of action. We desired that decision so much that uh, it somehow clouds our ability to discern. Okay, so we presume, we assume that okay, God, I think God has spoken, so I'm going with it. Okay, and we say okay, I'm taking a step of faith, even right, forgetting that faith is the substance and the evidence. Okay, there's some. It, it's based on the word of God. It's based on certain hard things. Right? It's um, it's the substance. It's the evidence of things not yet seen. Right? So, it is based on the word of God. So when we assume that God has spoken, when we uh, when we and then we follow through with action, then that results in a lot of damage. Okay, um, so. Um, for example, some this this happened, you know, like uh, like a young couple uh, who got married, and then they um, they, just, they just felt that okay, God is God is requiring of them to um, to leave everything, you know, the, uh, leave everything in the sense resign. They were actually quite senior in their organization, 
you know they were young but they were holding positions of responsibility and uh, you know in the organization where they were working both of them working professionals uh, probably in IT or something that so then they just felt that okay they need to move to another place uh, and then do some form of ministry there you know and resign here go there and they were going into a place which was you know the where the uh, it was much more expensive to live and so on in India, and they felt that, right? And it it was it came from a place of it, it's a good thing, right? They just wanted to serve God there, maybe start a church even, and um, and but the thing is, they they just went ahead, you know, uh, and uh, it was a very impulsive thing. Um, like we can't judge and say whether they prayed through, etc. But then they did that, and they realized that you know, after maybe six months, three months or six months, they realized that okay, this is not really you know, what they they had actually rushed. They had assumed, they presumed things, and then thankfully, mercifully, uh, by the grace of God, they were able to you know come back and restart. Uh, it took a while. Okay, it took a while because uh, you know things were not easy. They had actually quit good good positions, and then they had gone. So it took a while to get back, um, and uh, it took a while. But then, by the grace of God, it happened. Okay, they were able to get back um, to uh, and and you know like initially the the one person got a job and they were just managing on that, and then the other person also got a job and and so on. So the thing is this that um, when we uh, we are assume and we assume something to be true when we just presume that okay um, God has spoken when He has not and we work on it then when we uh, follow through and uh, you know uh, act on it then uh, then it becomes a problem okay so uh, so we need to and this also ha happens in the realm of our mind and and how we analyze and put things together so we need to be careful okay so so how do we safeguard ourselves against presumption okay one of the things that we see in 1 Thessalonians 5 especially in the light of prophecy and the prophetic word and instruction is to test all things hold fast to what is good okay to test all things and it's it's with uh, prophecy right 1 Thessalonians 5 uh, to do not uh, despise prophecies but test all things okay um and then um, uh, to hold fast to what is good abstain from every form of evil you know that those uh, instructions one after the other to test all things and hold fast to what is good which means you don't hold fast to what is not good when you test you find out that there are certain things that are mixed okay uh, certain things that i received as uh, you know which i thought uh, you know, and in my mind that it is to be, it is true, which, and certain things that are not good, certain things that are good, and I've received both, and I need to hold on to what is good, okay, uh, as an end result of testing. Okay. So we know what, how do we test it, um, you know, we studied in the prophetic, right, um, that is, is it in agreement with the word of God, okay, certain things are like, yeah, it does agree with the word of God. Uh, now I need to go beyond that. Is it in line with the character and nature of God? Okay, yes, it is. Uh, but you know, is this the way God has been leading me? Okay, is it in line with all that God has been speaking to me? Uh, you know, so He's calling me, He's training me, He's uh, you know preparing me and to commission me into a certain area. Now suddenly, can there be a U-turn to restart from scratch something else? Okay, things to think about. Okay. Okay, so we will we'll stop here, and uh, we'll continue with uh, you know this whole thing of presumption. Um, okay, when when it comes to living with a renewed mind, uh, it's it's something that we need to um, really uh, think about, right? Okay, we will look at it in the next class. Thank you. God bless. Bye bye. Thank you, Pastor. See you. Bye bye. Thank you, Pastor.